which others do. But you particularly mention a scoffer in here. I'd call him a scoffer, and that is William Lane Craig. I just saw some videos of William Lane Craig just yesterday. I was watching them where he mocks at people who believe in a literal Adam and Eve. He actually, he actually talks about how God might have uh, taken an ape a male ape and a female ape and made them into Adam and Eve and so on. And he said, there's no way you could have a talking serpent or he says talking snake. And and to, and then he mocks at people who believe that God took uh, Adam's rib and made a woman. He said how, you know, basically says how stupid is that? I mean, he just, he just really attacks Genesis 1 to 11. But then he goes on and admits, you know, he is totally committed to listening to what the secular scientists say. And so therefore, he has to add that to the Bible. That's his motivation. His motivation is not to take God to his word. His motivation is he wants to believe what the secular uh, world believes about evolution of millions of years, fit that into the Bible. He undermines the authority of the scripture. And so I would call him a scoffer and I, one who undermines God's word. So do you want to talk about those sort of scoffers real quickly? And as you talk about it uh, in your new book. Yeah, as you said, Ken, I mentioned two types of scoffers. There are those that who are outside the church who scoff at creation and the flood. And we saw that begin really in the 1800s with men like James Hutton, Charles Lyell, who influenced Charles Darwin, who went on to influence most of the Western world. And so many people today have sort of the idea of naturalism, the idea of uniformitarianism in their heads when they think about these issues of creation evolution and those men have basically influenced people in the church so when william lane craig reads genesis he's reading it really in light of those assumptions of assumptions of un uniformitarianism and although he's not a naturalist he basically takes those assumptions and reads them in to the bible in fact william lane craig calls genesis mytho history in other words, Genesis is basically mythological. It, it sort of reads as historical, but you need to understand it's actually um, talking to us in, in mythological language. You're not meant to take it naturally. You know, it's, and so when you even look at the genealogies in the New Testament, then it goes back to Adam. And, you know, William Lane Craig says real history doesn't start till Abraham. Well, it then, then what do you do with those genealogies in the New Testament that mix those real names of history that he would accept and then suddenly Adam, what, what does yeah. he do with that? And what about, what about when uh, Jesus in Matthew 19 refers to Genesis 1 27 and Genesis 2 24 as history, he would just say what Jesus is referring to myth to teach something. Yeah. Well, the problem with, with that, of course, Ken, is when you say history um, starts with Abraham, well, where does Abraham start? Abraham starts in Genesis chapter 11, not in Genesis chapter 12, we see the birth and reality of Abraham or Abram in Genesis 11. And if Genesis 1 to 11 is meant to be myth, doesn't that make Abraham a myth? Well, of well, course. I, that I, guess shows you, I guess he draws a line right before Abram, right? Or yeah. something like that. But that's where we, they, they have a real inconsistency of where do they start to take the Bible is real history because if you're going to believe in abraham well abraham but begins in genesis 11 he sets the foundation for the rest of the history that you see in genesis 12 but you know what william lane craig didn't just wake up one day and say well genesis is is a is mytho history it, that, that process started a long long time ago when he started to um read because he's you've got to remember william lane craig isn't really a theologian he's a philosopher and he takes man's philosophy and reads it in to mm. scripture. He doesn't just deny um, the book of Genesis. He, 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 he has a position called limited inerrancy. So he doesn't believe the Bible is fully inerrant. And that one of the reasons for that is because of his view of Genesis. Um, I've got statements in my book where I show he, he says he's only partially convinced of the virgin birth. He, he, he believes Jesus was in error in some of his teaching. In fact, he holds a, a, a heretical view of the nature of Jesus called Neo-Apollinarianism. And so if you look at his teaching, it, it's it's terrible when it comes to biblical doctrine. He, he holds to so many positions that the church have rejected throughout its history. And he really struggles in the New Testament because when it comes to the teachings of Jesus, he has to say, Things like, well, yeah, Jesus seems to believe in creation. He seems to believe 
in the flood. But you've got to remember, Jesus was also, as well as, as he was fully God, he was fully man. And in his humanity, he would have accommodated to the teaching of his day. And now we know more about the world we live in. We know that Genesis is not history. So therefore, we just have to say, well, Jesus was wrong in what he taught. And this is where we have to wake up in the church and realize there are consequences to I, to ideas. And we need to stop listening to men like William Lane Craig, because at every opportunity these days, he undermines the authority of the word of God. Yeah, and I saw that uh, on one of the uh, uh, links in uh, the United Kingdom there just recently, uh, that they were promoting a course that he has. And that course, I would encourage people not to do, mm -hmm. because all it's going to do is undermine the authority of scripture. Would you call him a heretic, by the way? You use the word heretical. Well, he holds to heretical teaching and whether I would actually call him a heretic um, because there's, there's the nuance on, and how you understand those things, because he still believes in, in, in Christ as savior. He still believes in the historical Jesus and he affirms certain things. In fact, really over the la over his teaching course of teaching, Ken, he's always said he holds to what he calls mere Christianity. So he only believed he, he'll only defend the doctrine of the Trinity and the doctrine of the deity of Christ, the doctrine of the resurrection. And he's not interested in defending anything else. It's a bit like the approach um, the famous English theologian C.S. Lewis took to the scriptures. He called it mere Christianity. Well, that's what William Lane Craig is doing. But mere, mere Christianity leaves out the authority of God's word, it leaves out the message of the gospel and so when you do that you really lose the foundation of your apologetics so i would say william lane craig is skating on thin ice and we need to be aware of of, of his teaching in fact paul in the new testament in colossians chapter 2 he tells us to beware lest we be taken captive by vain philosophy and i would say william lane craig is being taken captive by human philosophy vain philosophy you know, when people ask me, you know, well, why does he do that? I, what I would say, I believe it's academic pride and mm -hmm. it's academic peer pressure. That's what it is. He wants to actually be seen as an academic by the world. He would rather have the praise of men than the praise of God. Yeah. He would rather believe the word of fallible man over the word of the infallible God. And, and even defending the deity of Christ. I mean, when he says that because he was the God man in his humanity, then and he didn't necessarily believe everything that was right or got things wrong. I mean, what does that say ultimately when he's saying what that that Jesus was fallible? Yeah, well, that's the problem. Once you start attacking the foundations, if you're consistent and he's only been consistent, he realizes, well, he can't hold to this position. He can't hold to that position. He's only certain on, you know, things like the virgin birth. And so this this is where it, it takes you, Ken. And we need to realize um, that there are people out there like William Lane Craig who actually lead in the church astray. In fact, we need to wake up. He, he's the thing. I wrote the book, Ken, Scoffers, because Peter tells us that scoffers will come and they will try and lead you away with, in Peter's own word, false words. They will use false words. They will twist scripture in order to lead the people of God astray. And, you know, uh, Simon, when you look at the scoffers, as you said, you cover two types of scoffers, those from outside the church and those inside the church. Those outside the church, I mean, that's what you expect from the world. You expect scoffers, right? And of course, using Second Peter 3, as you do in the book, they deny creation, they deny the flood, uh, and they're willingly ignorant. It's a, it's a deliberate mm -hmm. choice on their part uh, to ignore the, the evidence that's there, uh, to ignore God's word, and it's very deliberate. It's a choice on their part. Uh, and but but from the world you expect that and they deny the the coming of Christ and the you know the judgment to come and all the rest of it. But it's the scoffers from within the church that are the problem, and yeah. that that's that's the real issue. And that's why uh, you know I I love this book in that you're dealing with that and and you yourself have studied theology, correct? Yeah, I've got yeah, I've got two degrees, a bachelor's and a master's degree in, in theology. So I, I've, I've looked a lot into these issues, but there, there are come, there are warnings, Ken, time and time again in the old, in, in, in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, as I said, Paul says to, to, to take care that we're not taken captive by um, a philosophy that's according to the traditions 
of men. And when he talks about being taken captive, the word in Greek literally means be careful that no one robs you, that they take away from you what you know of Christ. And that's what really has happened to men like William Lane Craig, because they, they so are enamored with many things that they see in the world, the teaching of philosophy, because people philosophy is basically the love of wisdom. Yeah. And who doesn't want to seem to be wise? You know, William Lane Craig is, is a smart guy. He's got two PhDs. You know, he's a clever guy, but he's been taken captive by a worldly philosophy. And well, you know, there's a scripture, you know, very well, too. Knowledge puffs up. Yeah. And, you know, here's the thing. Somebody here said, uh, this is such a good video. I recently saw Craig say these things and was wondering why most from the church were not acknowledging it as many praise his apologetics. I, mean, I know it's, it's amazing the number of people say, oh, but he's such a great apologetic, apologist for the existence of God and so on. People, you need to stand back and you need to be warned. He, he attacks and undermines the authority of God's word in Genesis and other places through the scripture. Yeah, he's just released a book, Ken, denying the existence of Adam. And he denies, because he denies the, the, the existence of Adam, or he, he doesn't deny the existence of Adam. He basically says Adam is part of an evolutionary line of people. So he wasn't the first man God created. But because he does that, he has to deny the doctrine of original sin. And when you deny the doctrine of original sin, well, then you really have to ask the question, why then do you need a savior in the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, I've just ordered his book. It's about to come, and I'm going to do a review of it for for the Answers in Genesis webpage. Um, so we can I can show you what William Lane Craig is actually teaching in his books. You know, somebody said here, Simon's book sounds awesome. Got to get it. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, you do need to get it. And you know, we need to come out uh, and really warn the church about these scoffers from inside the church, scoffers like William Lane Craig. And because he's been in the news lately, read some videos lately, got this new book coming out. It's very, very important that uh, people know what he's teaching. And that's why uh, using uh, him in this book, you reference him, what, once or twice or 20 times? or It's quite a bit, isn't it, through the book? A few times. I mentioned him in a few. Because he's, Ken, a lot of people these days are afraid to, to name names. Now, don't name names for the sake of, of doing that because I want right. to bash people. Right. But Paul in the New Testament names people. Other New Testament writers name people who, who have been led astray. And I'm not leading or well, not naming them to, to bash them, to humiliate them. I'm, I'm naming them so people know to be aware of their teachings, what they're actually teaching people and how it undermines the authority of the word of God. I fully expect people like William Lane Craig to dismiss you know, me and people like me to, to dismiss you, to call us crazy. Oh, he's already done that in the past and just wipes us off and sort of, you know, you know, you don't even listen to those people. And well, I mean, he's so arrogant, actually, to be honest, he's arrogant. You go and watch him. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, compared to what God knows, he knows nothing. Do you realize yeah. that? That's why, hey, I would rather stand before the Lord guilty of saying, I took your word as written because you know everything. And yeah. I let it speak to me rather than take the words of fallible man and add them to the Bible and think if I had two PhDs, which I don't, but William Lane Craig has in philosophy and so on, that I that I I know more than God. I mean, it is just so arrogant of humans to uh, to do that. And I'm I'm so pleased that you put this new book out uh, talking about those scoffers. And uh, obviously, you talk about scoffers from without the church as well. Um, but I encourage people to uh, get the book, brand new book, hot off the press, just came out. You can get it through the answersingenesis.org bookstore in the United Kingdom, and you can also get it in Australia.